body language. How you stand, sit, walk, talk, move your body, place your hands all mean a lot. Do you portray nervousness, confidence, dominance, submissiveness? And is that particular person you are thinking about attracted to you or not? You can find those answers without them saying a single word. Body language. Your body language leaks out your true feelings, intent and emotion. Even if you don't want to reveal those things, you will reveal them to the keen observer of human nature. It is a valuable skill to possess and master in your life. Here's a video of someone being asked, are you lying to me? Take a look. You're not lying to me? No. Okay, I'll see. Okay. Did you catch that? Watch his head movement. Let's play it again. You're not lying to me? No. Okay, I'll see. Okay. And now, without sound, his words say no, but his body says yes. Is this weird? Not really. Contradicting? Definitely. Without sound, you would swear he transmits yes. With sound, you hear no. Now, which one is the truth? Let's see what the lie detector test results say. And what did you answer? No. And the result for that question is, he's not telling the truth. I'm not? How? Friends, this mismatch between his words and action is what we call incongruency. The same happened with Bill Clinton when he talked about an alleged affair with his secretary, Monica Lewinsky. Take a look. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Saying I did not, looking away in another direction and nodding in another. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. All forms of incongruency. Besides that, you can notice the distancing language. That woman. It is your secretary. Why wouldn't you call her by name? Weird. Or isn't it? Later in his life, he admitted and opened up about the affair with her. Let's see, how can I think about the most stupid thing I could possibly do and do it? But the body language told us way earlier. Body language tells the truth, even from the grave. But why does body language tell the truth and words don't? The answer lies in your beautiful brain and can be summed up in one word. Ready? Evolution. In 1952, a scientist called Paul McLean began to speak of a triune brain, meaning the brain consisting of three parts. Without going into the extremely fascinating theories about what we do and don't know about the brains, what you need to know now is the following. By the way, I am oversimplifying this a lot to keep the video as condensed as possible. The deepest layer of our brain that was first developed in our evolution is what Paul McLean called the reptilian brain. The reptilian brain controls the body's vital functions such as heart rate, breathing, body temperature and balance. And later in our species evolution, we developed the limbic brain. The limbic brain deals with emotion and memory, very important for our body language purposes. And the last of the three to develop is the human brain, also known as the neocortex. The neocortex controls, among many other things, language and consciousness. We can't, at least fully, control our limbic brain consciously, but we do control our words most of the time. And that is why your body language is a more reliable reflection of someone's internal state than mere words. Before we jump into our video breakdown, it is important to know that a single behavior is like a word. Take the word drop for example. You can drop a book or a single drop of coffee that spills on your clothes. Same word, completely different meaning. The same is true with body language behavior. When you combine many together, many words together, you string a coherent sentence, a coherent meaning. So very important, body language has to be observed in clusters. The same body language can have multiple meanings across multiple contexts. The first scene we'll explore is the one shown in my 48 Laws of Power video, Law 3. The scene is from Suits. Many of you asked me to break the scene down, so let's get to it. Here's a little context. Harvey and Mike try to keep one of their clients from going bankrupt. They go to the bank to restructure the loan. However, 
the bank doesn't want that and hide behind a smoke screen because they have another agenda. I love Madison 25, really, but I'm afraid. Look at her eyes. Going from this to this. Squinting shows displeasure or concern. By squinting, they subconsciously try to block the light entering their eyes. They didn't like what they just saw or heard. Again, this is very situational because we also squint when we're focusing on something or trying to make sense of something we just heard. But at the same time, she does something else that reveals a lot about her state of mind. And this is a game changer for you. Try to spot it. But I'm afraid if you look at the fine print. Yes, the partial shrugs. This reveals insecurity or doubt in what a person is saying. A very good indicator that she lacks confidence in what she just said. I'm 25, really. But I'm afraid if you look at the fine print, the terms of the loan are what they are, and what they aren't is subject to renegotiation. Are you kidding me? And look at that smirk on her face. This is one of the seven universal facial expressions called contempt. She really feels that Harvey and Mike are beneath her consideration. You see this when people feel superiority over you or think your idea or you are worthless and deserving scorn. Are you kidding me? The terms of loans are adjusted all the time. And you can see he has the assets. What I see? Smirking again. Is that I'm going to have to give you a 50% haircut on that. That is not liquid. You're never going to be able to sell. Let's pause it here. Mike compresses his lips together. This is an interesting one. A lip compression is much like covering our eyes with our hands to block out something negative. Combine this with him moving his eyes away and you get annoyance. The eyes are a tricky one to reach, which we'll cover in depth in other instances. But here, you see him looking away submissively and annoyed. He looks down. Compare this to how Harvey looks sideways. Now, I'm not saying that when you look down, it's always submissive. Like I said, we'll get to that later. LA Minority Partnership Interest and that. Now, did you catch that? Here, I'll play it again. His lip compression is far tenser than Mike's, indicating a much higher emotional response. What is the emotional response though? The answer lies in his jaw muscles. Take a look again. Yes, observe how he clenches his jaw. You will spot this behavior a lot. People tend to clench their jaw muscles when they are upset, angry or fearful. In this case, it's indicative of suppressed anger. Trust and that a monkey could tell you. That's another very obvious universal micro expression. Disgust. You can see the nose wrinkling here and the upper lip getting raised. You never monetize that. And you know what else a monkey could tell you? You're about to ruin a property that will make you millions. Her eyes are squinted again. I'm so sorry, gentlemen. Pushing her chin up while saying sorry. This cluster of her moving her chin up in combination with the lowered eyelids and the smile indicates contempt, disdain or distaste. It is a very aggressive and dominant move. She is clearly trying to hide her anger here. You're about to ruin a property that will make you millions. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but this is not 2007. We don't play that game anymore. The days of you high-flying people claiming you're richer than God. Squinting again, and look what Mike does. She oh, really pierces really through his soul, and the heat is too much for him to take. Look sideways, which is a great way to diffuse attention, by the way. But there, then he goes, he looks down again. Very submissive. Today we're going to take a look up your skirt and see what you have. Laying the pen down indicating this conversation is over. Today we're going to take a look up your skirt and see what you have. And I'm afraid you don't have much. Man, that is harsh. We are going to look up your skirt and I'm afraid you don't have much. <laughs> she clearly is not going to move from her standpoint. And Mike looks for confirmation to Harvey, who doesn't give him his attention. You see this a lot when a submissive individual looks for the leader's next move or permission. Now spotting these behaviors with a bit of training isn't hard. They will be naturally filtered to you, but the most important thing is why are people displaying these behaviors? In this particular case, Mike finds out why she wasn't going to budge. It doesn't make sense for them to foreclose and devalue all their other projects. Unless they have another agenda. 
Huh. I wonder where we could ever find evidence of that. I think we can take this to the bank. I see that's funny because we're actually going to a bank. Twice in one day, Mr. Spector. I understand how your client must feel. Now here she insinuates that Harvey's client must be desperate. Look at how she keeps on walking, not giving him much attention. This is a very dominant alpha move she makes, letting him adjust to her. I will cover walking confidently in a separate video soon. Actually, he's feeling fantastic. You know why that is? Because I told him the balloon payment's going away. Then Harvey speeds up and physically blocks her path, not letting her be the dominant one here. I mean, she already beat him up pretty hard in the previous conversation. Because I told him the balloon payment's going away. Okay, I'll bite. Why is it going away? Because See the tension in her neck, the fast blinking. She's feeling some internal tension. Is it going away? Because as much as people hate lawyers, you know who they hate more? Bankers. After all, you were the ones that got us into this recession in the first place, right? Oh, gentlemen, I do not need a history lesson. Then let's talk about the future. What happens to Madison 25 after you force it into bankers? Now look at her shoulders. What could this mean? Here's a hint, think about a predator killing its prey. Where do they aim for? Yes, the neck. It's a very vulnerable area, so when you perceive an attack, your limbic brain already kicks in trying to protect you. Coming back to our clip, this behavior is called the turtle effect. In essence, she is trying to hide in the open, and this shoulder raise protects a vital area, the neck. High shoulders are not a sign of confidence. The shoulder shrug can mean a lot of things, which we'll cover in due situations. But in this context, it is very clear. It serves for protection over neck and throat. I do not need a history lesson. Then let's talk about the future. What happens to Madison 25 after you force it into bankruptcy? Harvey's eye contact is intense, not looking away. The equivalent of a predator eyeing down his prey. Maybe someone steps in and finishes it. Someone whose recent merger leaves. There, that one is critical. The harsh swallow is a spontaneous reaction to something unsavory, dangerous, or extremely stressful. This is a very reliable indicator of distress. The they are onto something. Also, observe how tense the neck muscles are. Someone whose recent merger leaves them needing a large downtown address. Oh, well, now that you mention it, there's a little item. Looking down. This is the first time we see her do it like this. Why didn't she do this before? Hmm, guys, it is these kind of deltas that you're looking for when you observe someone's body language. In this context, looking down reveals her stress and subconscious avoidance of an attack as her smokescreen is being revealed. What smokescreen am I talking about? It is discussed in this video, watch it. I'll also link it at the end of the video. There's a little item in your shareholder letter about the search for a new corporate headquarters. Yeah, I like to read. Well, I don't. You intend to leverage this for Then she starts denying, but Harvey abruptly interrupts her and continues talking. Well, I don't. You intend to leverage this foreclosure to get a prime piece of real estate at a song. You see, Elaine? Here her mouth opens to inhale more oxygen as her fight or flight kicks in. Combine this with what we saw earlier and you get a pretty accurate read. When your autosympathetic nervous system kicks in, the blood starts flowing to your muscles to prepare you for the freeze, fight or flight response. You will salivate less as a consequence, which makes swallowing harder. We'll go deeper on this in another video. You see, Elaine, we looked up your skirt. In the six clients you represent surrounding Madison 25, well, it turns out Pearson Hardman actually reps three of them. Look at Mike here. Chin goes up, now he's the one looking down on her. This is a very high status move. One that a boss gives his or her employee. They got her, and they know it. Also notice vocal tonality, way more assertive. And when the other three find out about what you've done, which will happen right after I leave here? Her eyes are squinted again. We'll rep all six. And when we move their business elsewhere, they'll take roughly... Mm, a shitload of money out of your bank. Shitload? We'll give or take. Friends, this was an introduction to what type of breakdown videos I will make. I let you decide which body language video breakdown you want to see first. I already got some of you suggesting a James Bond body language breakdown. Also from someone called Thomas Shelby from Peaky Blinders, which I haven't seen yet. So if you also have a particular scene or movie character you want me to break down, leave a comment down below.
to fucking bed. No! And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. It is totally free and you will help the channel grow a lot faster. Also, YouTube will recommend these videos more to you so you don't miss out. Until the next one.